Have you got an old piece of furniture that you'd like to freshen up? Well in this video I'm going to be modernising this dated looking highboard, giving it a fresh new beach look. Stay tuned to find out how I did it. Okay, so before we actually get into the techniques that I'm going to use into doing this, I want to just warn you first, this is a one-way ticket. Once you've done this, you can't go back. So why do this in the first place? Well, my cabinet that I've got doesn't fit in with the style of the room that it's in at the minute. I've got other furniture that has the same uh, beach look effect, so I just want to make this matching to all that furniture. However, there are on this piece, there's some defects that I would like to sort of hide through this uh, beach look that I'm going to be doing. There's some cracks and some chips and whatnot which I'd like to hide during the process. But as I say, this is a one-way ticket, so once you start putting paint on that thing, it is not going to be very easy to get it back off. So think about it long and hard before you start to do this. Other than that, I think it's a great way to bring a modern look to what would be an old, dated piece of furniture. Now the first part of the whole process is going to be to sand off the old lacquer that's on the cabinet itself. And to do that, I've got some, obviously, some sandpaper. I've also got my orbital sander. And to get into the grain of the wood, I'm actually going to be using a wire brush. I've got a brand new wire brush here. It's important to use a brand new one because old ones are going to have impurities in the brush itself, which can then be rubbed into the, to the piece of furniture. And once you've got it all cleaned off, you're going to need some paint. I am using this paint here, which is actually the paint I used on this wall here behind me. It's just a normal white emulsion paint. For the paint, you're obviously going to need a load of paint supplies. So I've got some rollers, some paintbrushes, some normal stuff there. And then sort of my secret ingredient to this technique, you're going to need some baby wipes. I've got two packets here and what they're going to be used for, we'll get to in just a moment. And finally, you're going to need to seal it off. So I've got some polyurethane varnish here and I'm just going to use that to make it nice and strong and a sealed finish at the end. And once you've got all your stuff, you can get straight into it. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I've got some marks on the top here. Most noticeably, I've got this, the, the actual veneer is starting to delaminate from the surface below. Now, this is uh, not ideal. The ideal solution would be to take the whole top surface off and to refinish it with a new one. But then you're getting into colour differences and whatnot, so I'm going to totally, totally avoid that by doing this beach look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these cracks that are all in this area here and I'm going to fill them with super glue. Now super glue is actually surprisingly good for this purpose because it's thin, it gets underneath and it goes right into all these joints and cracks and whatnot. And because we're going to be painting it anyway, we're going to be hiding a lot of the uh, the super glue that's going to be covering up all of these marks anyway. So I'm going to start by doing this so it has lots of time to dry. And I'm just going to use my knife to try and sort of massage that underneath the veneer. Okay, so I'm going to give that top surface now time to really dry out and let that super glue really seek into all the pores of the wood. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove some of the hardware here that's going to be in my way in the future. So the first stage of this whole process is going to be to prepare the surfaces for the paint. And as you can see, the, most of the surfaces on this are a varnish finish and they've actually sealed the pores of the wood. So what we're looking to do is get rid of that, co that coat of varnish and open up the pores again. To do that, I'm going to do it really simple. This is an ideal situation. We've got a perfectly flat piece here. So I'm just going to use my orbital sander, just go over a little area in the middle here. And then to open up the pores, because the sawdust will go into the pores through the sanding, we're going to use the wire brush. And that's it now, you can quite clearly see, it's hard to see on the camera, but you can quite clearly see that the pores of the wood are back open. So sanding a piece of flat wood with an orbital sander is obviously the ideal situation. But just for example, these drawers here and a lot of the cabinet itself has got a lot of mouldings in it. And there, it's just tedious work, you're going to have to get in there with sandpaper. 
and you can use the wire brush as well. Just remember to always be working with the grain of the wood. So you're going to want to be sanding these pieces this way, these this way, and these pieces this way here. Like I say, it's tedious work. It's going to take me a long time to get all this done. So I'm going to time lapse through all of it and then we'll take a look at it once it's all done. Okay, so as you can see, it's now ready for paint. I've sanded off all the surfaces and I've gone over it everything with the wire brush. The technique is pretty much exactly the same as what we used on the bench, but it's obviously a bit more intricate here with having all the mouldings and whatnot. A couple of things to note, on the piece of furniture there are still pieces of varnish on the, on the mouldings and whatnot, dotted around here and there, but it's not going to be that important because it's just going to add to the character. As sure at the beginning I did some repairs on the on the top surface there with the super glue. All I did was sand straight over that and it's turned out great. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll take out the shell from one of the drawers, put it on the bench, and I'll show you the next stage of putting the paint on and how to do that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my board set up here, I've got my paint, and I've also got my baby wipes here. And you can no you notice on the board itself, you'll see there's an area here that's a bit darker, there's another one here, there's an area here that's a lot lighter. All that is is I've sanded more here than I have in these areas but it's just going to add character to it so I really wouldn't worry about that. You don't need to get it perfect. And all I'm going to do here is put a load of paint on and I'm going to let it dry until I can sort of see that it's starting to get a skin. And once I can see that it's got a skin I'm going to use the baby wipes and start to wipe a bit off to reveal the, the grain of the wood that's underneath. you'll notice that I'm actually putting this on quite thick. And there we have it. I'm just going to leave that like that now for about five to ten minutes until I can see that it's starting to dry. I can actually see already over here it's starting to dry. Okay, I can now sort of see that there's starting to be a bit of a skin on the surface of the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these baby wipes, and this is where it gets a bit messy. And I'm just going to take one and just sort of start to wipe it off. And you'll see the paint will actually be quite difficult to remove. But it will leave some of the wood exposed. And you're probably wondering why baby wipes? Well they actually have a bit of moisture in them which attacks the paint at the same time. And this is just where you can really sort of experiment with it on your own. Take off as much as you want or leave a lot on or do whatever you want. This is where you can sort of experiment yourself. So yeah, I'm going to leave that there. That's the underside of the shelf. So it's okay for a first test and whatnot. But I now know roughly where I need to start. That paint was a little bit too dry, if I'm being honest. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that next time my paint is still a little bit wetter when I start to peel it off. But now you can quite clearly see where the paint has soaked into the wood and where it sort of hasn't. So what I'll do now is I'll put that to one side and we'll work on the drawers. Okay, so I'm now set up for this drawer here. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to do this front face here because all the flat surfaces are pretty much exactly the same as what we just looked at. The goal is pretty much the same thing. Get paint all over it, wait for a surface like a skin to, to appear and then start wiping it off as you wish. So I'm just going to start putting some paint on. So 
So I've now got paint all over everywhere, but you can see there are like in the corners here, there's some puddles of paint. I'm not gonna worry about them too much. I'm just gonna spread them about a little bit. Try to get the, the grain of the wood to start to reappear with the paintbrush. And just generally work it in into the wood. So again, I'm gonna leave this now, but not for as long. And then I'm gonna start to wipe it off with the baby wipes. Now if you see like here, I've obviously removed a little bit too much. You go back in with the paintbrush and just go over it with the paint that's still in the brush. You don't need to add more paint and then just leave that area for a while and then just work on something else. And what you can do as well is even after you've used the baby wipes, you can sort of go in and start to bring back the, uh, the look of the grain into the wood. So what you're trying to create here is sort of like a, a, a used but natural look. So the, the, you're, you're aiming for, ideally this piece of furniture would have been painted white and then left outside to weather and whatnot. So you can imagine the corners are going to have a little bit more paint missing than the corners, the inside corners. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to leave it there. One thing that you will notice inside the holes here, there's a little bit more paint than what I would ideally have in there and it's going to need to be removed eventually. So yeah, that's the technique. you just basically got to go over the whole piece of furniture and do that all over it. But yeah, as you can see, there isn't really a wrong way of doing it. There isn't really a right way of doing it. you just got to do it to your tastes. But again, like with the sanding, it's a lot of work, so I'm just going to time lapse you through all of it. Okay, so it's been a few days now and as you can see it's all nice and dried but it feels very rough to the touch now at the minute because the, 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 the paint is not designed to give a high gloss finish. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to go over it with some uh, 400 grit sandpaper just really really lightly just to get rid of the, the surface roughness and to give it a nice sealed look and a nice sealed finish to the touch I'm going to give it two coats of this uh, polyurethane lacquer. Obviously, between coats, I'm going to have to leave it to dry overnight, so it's going to be a two-day process. And before putting the second coat on, I'm going to just go over it quickly with some 400 grit sandpaper. And all of that goodness is going to be a time lapse, which you can watch right now. <laughs> so I'm really happy with it. A slight change of plans at the end there. I didn't um, do the second coat of lacquer like we like we said, the polyurethane. 
Um, it turns out that one coat was just enough. It's obviously already been lacquered before or uh, like a, a polyurethane coating on it before, which I sanded down. And then it got the paint on it and then just one coat was enough. It feels fine to the touch. It's nice and smooth. The pores aren't open on the wood and I'm happy with it. So I'm just going to leave it there. The only thing left to do now is to get it all taken back apart and carry it upstairs into my apartment. But for that, I'm just going to sign off here. I'm just going to end the video quickly. I'd like to thank you for watching, obviously. Have you ever done anything like this before? I wouldn't call this uh, a restoration. I would call this more of a modification. But it has enabled me to put this bit of furniture back into my flat and it to fit into the style of the room. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to leave you now with a couple of nice B-roll shots of the, of the furniture in my apartment and some direct comparisons to before and after. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week.